About three and a half years ago, VanillaSoft, the industry's most successful sales engagement platform, hired Perry Martel International, an executive search firm, to conduct a search for a critical role in their senior leadership, that being chief marketing officer. According to Adweek, across the corporate landscape, the length of chief marketing officer's tenure with a company is becoming shorter with the average now roughly less than the amount of time it takes to get a college degree. That's why this series is titled, How to Avoid the CMO Money Pit. With that short a tenure at the senior executive level, let's face it, everyone loses. Hi, this is Peter Clayton with Total Picture Media. In this new series, I'll take you inside the search, the hire, and the results of VanillaSoft CMO search. Having covered the talent acquisition, recruiting technology, and HR technology space for well over 15 years, I can tell you CMO roles are the shortest lived in the C-suite. Why? Expectations rarely live up to the reality. Also, according to a marketing dive brief, aside from overseeing all branding, marketing, and advertising activity, including much or all of the related tech, many brands now are also expect the CMO to bear key responsibility for customer experience, personalization, and company revenues. In other words, you're gonna need a unicorn as a CMO, and there aren't many of them. VanillaSoft, having a unique perspective on the market, knew they had to go outside to fill this role. In this video, we'll take you through the process step-by-step. The first episode is titled, The Setup, Finding a Unicorn, and features the principals of Perry Martell International, David Perry and Anita Martell, and Daryl Prail, the unicorn. Enjoy. Uh, David, you've known Daryl Prail for over a decade. Why were you committed to discussing the vanilla soft CMO opportunity with them. And, you know, more importantly, how did you convince him to get even curious? He had no interest when you initially called him. He was perfectly happy doing what he was doing. So why Daryl? Because he fit the profile. And in going after Daryl and um, presenting the opportunity, it's the same way I went after everybody else. The first thing we do is produce a long list and then we cut it down based on these are the requirements, things that we were looking for. And, and Daryl hit all five things we were looking for. And therefore, I made the presentation. And when he said no, you know, it is what it is, right? I, I assume that's my in our inability to articulate my value proposition. And Daryl would laugh and say, yeah, you didn't do well. So I just repackage and represent and repackage and represent. And at one point, I finally said, Daryl, you know me. I know you. Enough. I know you're not looking. Uh, I, I just want you to go and have a meeting with these guys. He approached me out of the blue for an opportunity he was filling. And uh, he was a character. He was different from all the other recruiters I'd ever uh, met before. He was blunt. He was direct, uh, colorful, lots of stories, lots of uh, real life examples of what works, what didn't. And for the first time ever in the recruiting process, seemed to care as much about me as he did about the employer and making a successful arrangement, shall we say, between the two parties. And what I loved about my experience the first time with David was that I always knew what was going on. I, was, I had both an advocate as well as a counselor, as well as somebody who would tell me as it is, whether I wanted to hear it or not. Um, so that was refreshing. And that's how we began. Not your typical uh, start of a relationship, but uh, it, and it's only been that way again over the years. So he is a he's a character. So the first thing you have to understand is Daryl was like I, yes, I do know Daryl. I've known him for probably ten or fifteen years. I recruited him into another opportunity fifteen years ago. He did a fantastic job, but he was just one of literally. I counted this morning in the record book because we produce a binder at the end of every search that says here's what we did, and there were 156 candidates. He's actually second from last in the list because it's alphabetical according to where he was where he was at the time the company. So Anita, you know, Daryl refers to David as a character more than once. Actually, um, what do you think he's referring to? A after all, you know this guy better than anyone. David has quite a sense of humor, and he uses that sense of humor 
um, throughout the whole process, whenever we meet anybody, whenever we interview people, it puts them at ease. He also is a type of person that really thinks outside the box. So when people are usually stopping at a certain area, he'll look around and he'll find other ways to be able to reach out to them. Um, the other thing too is he's just not afraid to talk to anyone. <laughs> he talks to everybody in sight. So this breaks down a lot of barriers and it makes things go much, much smoother. Here's Daryl's perspective. David was an interesting character in the sense that because he's exposed to so many different opportunities and clients uh, and needs as he talks to all the people looking for uh, high talented individuals with a specific set of skills, that he sees over and over again a lot of the same mistakes being made. In my intro, I introduced VanillaSoft as the industry's most successful sales engagement platform. So uh, tell us a little bit more about the company and, and how you ended up working with them. Well, they actually uh, found us on our website and, uh, and the CEO pinged me and said, hey, we're looking for a VP of marketing. You want to talk? David Hood knew exactly what he wanted. He knew where they were in the market space. He understood who his challengers were. He understood why they were better. They had 800 customers at the time, 800 customers, probably the best known secret in Ottawa because um, not too many people knew who they were. So this is a company that had just done what they were supposed to do and, and grabbed market share. And now they were ready to go to the next, next level. It wasn't a, a company that suddenly got a whole pile of money uh, infused. These guys had bootstrapped everything. And that really amazed us because um, we tend to, we, we tend to work, only with serious companies. I mean, and by serious company, so we specialize in three things, real estate, big buildings, construction, and tech. And in tech, we focus on companies that are actually solving real problems, not companies that are making technology in pursuit of a problem to solve. We want companies that are actually solving a problem. And, and the problem they solved was they actually have a, uh, have a platform that makes salespeople be able to make more money doing what they're doing. So it's a platform, sales engagement. It's a, it's a platform for sales guys to actually make their number. Now that's unique. That we thought was something that was well worth taking to the market in a big way. And the only piece they were missing was that market maker, that, that marketing, that, that chief marketing officer that actually understood what it was like out there in the real world and wasn't just looking to, they weren't just looking for someone to make pretty brochures. They wanted someone that was going to, you know, Steve Jobs would say, put a dent in the world. And that's what, that's what, that's what Prairie's done. That's for sure. Ottawa's got 2,100 tech companies. There are, last time we looked, about 18 VPs of marketing, chief marketing officers in Ottawa that have international experience. And that was the key. We needed someone who had international experience and can go up against you know, American companies, European companies, and go toe to toe, not just local talent. And that was the deal. And, and we knew that by doing this, we were going to help this company grow. And, and we did. I mean, I don't think I don't think we can't tell you this, but you know, a year later, they'd already Daryl had already hit his three-year objective at the end of the first year, and they came back to us and asked us to hire, you know, 80, 87 more people. And we said. It's not what we do. So we hired a director of um, talent acquisition instead and, and put her in. And I've been recruited multiple times throughout the years, as happens. And every single time I'd actually said, no, go away. I like my life. I had a good quality of life. I had a steady, predictable income. I had good relationships with my clients. So I actually, despite having a personal relationship with David, I wasn't interested in his overtures towards me and the opportunity with VanillaSoft. What was interesting about that situation was that David knew aspects of the opportunity and the company and the people who work at the company that obviously I did not. So when I rebuffed him initially, he persevered. And finally, by about the fourth time, he basically yelled at me as friends and professional colleagues can do. And he essentially said, Prail, do this for me. This is a good fit for you. This is a good fit for them. I wouldn't waste your time only he said it perhaps more directly and more colorfully. And uh, based on knowing David, knowing his ability to identify opportunities, his talent, uh, his discerning eye, uh, and his tendency to protect 
not just the employer, but the employee me, because I've seen it firsthand. I did it. So, and then of course the last thing you can do is tell David that he's right, uh, because then he just lets you know that he's right. So, which is part of his charm. Dave, I've known Dave for 40 years now. And even though he looks much younger. <laughs> Thank you. Um, he, he's very tenacious and he, does, he doesn't stop until he gets, if he's committed to something, he won't stop until the job gets done. And I always found that a very um, encouraging and grounding quality about him. It's one of the things that <laughs> one of the things that attracted me to him in the first place was because of that. And when we started our business, I knew at that point that we would be in pretty safe. It was a pretty safe bet if um, if the business grew and continued to grow that together. And just with that quality that he has of being so tenacious, that we'd have success. Can you speak a little bit to how David's and yours approach to something like the Vanilla Soft opportunity um, as a team, working as a team? How do you go into an assignment and uh, split up the responsibilities, so to speak? We both look at things in two different ways. Mm -hmm. So David is very technical. He'll look at all the qualifications, all of these types of things that they're looking for, whereas I will look on the human side and I'll look on a lot of, usually I'll be very quiet in in interviews. So for when we start a project from start to finish, we are both in the room for every single step. So the interviews with the candidates, the interviews um, beforehand with the client to get to know the client, figure out what their strategic plans are, where they want to be, how they want to go about doing the search, what they're comfortable with, what they're not comfortable with. And we spend a lot of time just talking with the clients, which right there, I think, makes a big difference between us and other search companies. Um, Whereas other companies will maybe have a phone call that'll be half hour, and then they're done, they take the assignment and off they go to the races. Well, we're not like that. So we will speak with them, we will meet, well, before COVID, (laughs) we would meet with them in person, but now it's over Zoom. And then we usually have regular check-ins every single week with the client so that we can discuss what's what's going well, what's not going well, where we have to adjust our plan. So um, as a team, we, we truly do work like a team with our client company. And when we find the candidates, we pretty much get down to the same process with the candidates. But you have to remember that oftentimes in our industries, we're uprooting somebody from where they are. We're moving them from one end of a country to another, or even from one country to another. And so that's not not to be taken lightly. And so we have a very moralistic view on that where we want to be really sure that the person, before they commit and before um, they're moved into this new position, if they're the ones that are chosen, that it's been um, vetted very carefully and it's a serious matter to them. So we we want to be sure that one-year guarantee comes into play for sure. We don't want, we spend a lot of time on a search, Um, but it's because we want to be sure. So we do a 360 all the way around with the clients, with the candidates. Um, I'll do an emotional intelligence assessment. Dave will do the references, which are 360, and we do a very complete process. The tremendous cost of bringing, especially the senior executive, into a role. And if it doesn't work out, it's an emotional cost. It's you know a financial cost to the company. And it also uh, affects the morale of the employees in the company. Every candidate we ever hire, my goal is to understand who their friends are. They're, you know, their top performing, high profile friends. And I want access to those people. So, of course, we treat them like world, both sides, but especially the candidate side, because our ability to bring, you know, change makers to the marketplace or rainmakers to the marketplace is predicated on our ability to reach out to them and our reputation in the marketplace. And that all comes from Canada's side in this industry, more so than the client side.